What's going on, everybody? Welcome into this edition of War Chant TV. It is the War Chant Report featuring Iris Schofel, managing editor of WarChant.com in the top left of your screen, and Tom Lang, director of original content and the executive producer of the Jeff Cameron Show. He's got so much stuff, it barely fits on the screen. Our own Tom Lang, top right corner. Hit the thumbs up button watching us here on YouTube. We certainly would appreciate it. You can subscribe to our YouTube page as well in the lower right corner. And don't forget, it's a home game this weekend, so there's a happy hour going on over at the Corner Pocket and Grill on Appalachia Parkway in Tallahassee. That goes off at 5 p.m. with Jeff Cameron and Corey Clark. So come on out. Join the fun there. And Jeff's staying busy. He'll have the pregame show rolling. That's at, what, 9 a.m. with you, Tom? That is correct. 9 a.m. on Saturday. 9 a.m. pregame show live here on War Chant TV. And then the postgame show. Tom's not working for the weekend, everybody. He works on the weekend. He's got the postgame show going with Gene 10 minutes after the NC State-Florida State game, which is the game of the week here on War Chant Report. Florida State hosting at 3-5, and 6-2 and two NC State. They are ranked 19th in the college football playoff poll. This is the first-ranked team Florida State has played since Notre Dame in Week 1. NC State coming off a pretty impressive win over Louisville. They scored 21 unanswered to ice the game against the Cardinals. Florida State, meanwhile, coming off that tough, tough 30 to 20 loss against Clemson in Death Valley, Ira. You were there. You've been in every practice. You've seen what they've gone through every weekend and every practice. It was an extremely tough physical game. They were up in that game. No one expected them to win. They weren't favored, but they did find themselves with the lead with five and a half minutes to go and the ball, and they weren't able to win. Man, that's it feels deflating, although the uh, expectation wasn't all that high. So can Florida State respond? How will they respond, do you think? Uh, coming off that hard-fought game against Clemson? You know, I think emotionally, I think they're they're fine. You know, I thought we got that vibe after the game. You know, you and I were we, with Corey. We were up there uh, in Clemson. We talked to the players after the game. I thought the way they handled it was was different from Notre Dame. I felt like the Notre Dame game felt like, because it was so much buildup in the preseason, it felt like there was such a climax on that game. And when they lost it the way they did, I think they were really heartbroken and it did affect them. This is a little bit different. You know, this is middle of the season. Uh, the, the team has been uh, on an upward trajectory now for several weeks. And I, the, just by the way they were talking after the game, I felt really good about them emotionally. And I think that's bared out this week at practice. Mike Norvell said Tuesday was really good. Wednesday was very good. He said it was one of the best Wednesdays they've had all season. So I think from a psychological, emotional, mental standpoint, uh, I think they're in good shape. I don't think they're going to have a huge letdown that way. Unfortunately, it was a really physical game. The other thing you talked about, it was a very physical football game. Uh, on top of that, uh, you know, there's been a, some sort of bug on campus this week. Mike Norvell mentioned they've had some guys, uh, you know, not feeling well because of, you know, this this virus or whatever it is that's going around. So, you know, that's just, again, another concern uh, going into a game like this against an NC State team that, you know, when you talk to FSU's players and coaches, one of the first things they all talk about is, that NC State's a very physical team uh, and a very, uh, you know, they 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 will fight you. And I, I don't know that those two games back-to-back are a great s- scenario for Florida State, especially coming off that physical game. So that's my biggest concern. I think mentally and emotionally, I think they're going to be okay. Uh, Tom wears many hats for us at War Chan, as well as with Jeff on Real Talk 93.3, but doctor isn't one. If you were a doctor, I don't think you would prescribe this game for Florida State, man. Number 19, NC State coming in. Just how important is this game, Tom, for Florida State to, to get back on the track, get some of that momentum, get back on the right trajectory, and this entire month of November? I mean, the next four games set up to be quite daunting when it comes to ACC standards, it seems. Yeah, I think we've gone back and forth on this quartet of games, guys, for the last <laughs> month or so, where we were like, this. most of them are unwinnable. Then there was a period of time about two weeks ago where you think, well, looks like everything is falling into place for Florida State. And now again, maybe this week with the news of the bug going around the team and then obviously – how physical that game was against Clemson. We're, we're back to a place where we're thinking, I don't know, this this could be a really tough month in November. This game's really important, though, because the number one word Mike Norvell likes to use around the program is respond. And you want to be able to see a clear line of delineation. Ira, you asked about it during the press conference on Monday. How do you get them to respond better? How does morale stay high after a, a deflating loss in a way that it didn't after the Notre Dame game in week one? To me, this game is is critical to show at least that much. Of course, you want to win it, but you're a home underdog for a reason. NC State is deeper, and NC State certainly is really physical. We'll get into that a little bit more when we preview NC State in depth. Uh, and then, you know, for this month, 
man. You've got two rivalry games in the span of 14 days, plus a road trip up to a beleaguered BC program. But again, if that's the sandwich game on the road in the cold against BC between your two rivals, that could present some of its own unique problems. Uh, to me, I think the best case scenario in this particular month is to split it at this point. Uh, and realistically, you know, you want to grab that one up on the road in BC and then just put yourself in position because who knows, who knows, maybe that final week of the season, this SS minnow that's crashing into the waves down in Gainesville may be in much worse shape, but it's going to be a really interesting month for a lot of people, both players and coaches to see about the future of this program. Ira, a famous man once said, uh, they'll remember November. So, uh, these next four games, you know, Tom mentioned, you know, maybe best case scenarios is splitting and going two and two. What do you look like as being uh, the most likely case? And, and what is the best case for Florida State in November this season? Yeah, I think if you could, if you offered Mike Norvell two and two right now, I think he'd take it. Um, I think, you know, publicly he'll say they think they can win all four. I'm sure in his heart he would love to win three of them. Uh, but if you could guarantee him two and two, I think he'd take it. And I think that would accomplish so much for this team. Uh, and I think they've got a shot at it. I really, I really like uh, the Boston College game, whether notwithstanding. I mean, Tom's right. That's going to be a little bit of a challenge for these Florida kids. The other day of practice, it was I think about fifty-five degrees, and you saw guys in like long sleeves and you know, and, and sweats and you know, you know, bundling up. So it, it can be a lot different up at Boston. But uh, I do still like that game because of the way Boston College has been playing lately. And then I, I, I still think maybe I'm the maybe I'm the crazy one, but I still, I still like the matchup with Miami. Uh, I think they're going to play well in that game. I think uh, Miami's offense is not going to look like it's looked when they come here. Uh, so, I, you know, again, I, I think they can win two of these games. If you win, if you only win one, I don't think it's the end of the world. But man, they it just hurts from a, from a perception standpoint because you built, you know, you started building back some of that goodwill. And if you end the season with four losses in your last five games, it, it's going to kind of erase a lot of that. Florida State, again, not getting really a, an easy bounce back opportunity on Saturday when they're going to take on NC State. NC State's got some real legitimate players on a lot of important spots on the football field, especially on the offense. We'll break that down as well as the defense of the Wolfpack next here on the War Chant Report. Live in living color and totally free, subscribe to War Chant TV on YouTube, the digital home of WarChant.com. From the practice field to pregame and the phone calls afterwards, War Chant's YouTube channel is home to live programming like Seminole Headlines, Wake Up War Chant, The Jeff Cameron Show, as well as Trench Talk, a live Q&A with Knowles offensive lineman Devontae Love-Taylor. Just search War Chant on YouTube and click or tap the subscribe button. That's it. It's totally free. War Chant TV on YouTube. Just another reason we're the ultimate Seminole sports source. Welcome back to the War Chant Report, everybody. I'm Aslan Hunchavani, joined by Irish Ophel and Tom Lang. We're all with WarChant.com, your ultimate symbol sports. Or hit that thumbs up button. We certainly would appreciate it. Almost as much if you would just go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube page. You can get everything you need. Hit that subscribe button in the bottom right of the video and then click on the bell. That will notify you when new videos and live shows are available. And we've got a whole bunch of them. The Jeff Cameron Show goes Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday live on War Chant TV as well as 93.3 FM Real Talk. We got Wake Up War Chant with Corey Clark and myself Monday through Friday. Seminole Headlines carries the day on Tuesday. And we got Trench Talk Mondays, a Sunday smash with Ira and Jeff. That goes on Sundays. And again, we got a happy hour dropping on Friday, 5 p.m. with Jeff and Corey. Back to this ball game, everybody. Number 19, NC State, comes to Tallahassee, taking on 3-5 and five Florida State. NC State on a pretty good trajectory this season. You know, they slipped up early against uh, Mississippi State on the road, but got things right, beat Clemson in overtime. Uh, Devin Leary, four touchdowns in that victory. Uh, but they lost to Miami. Miami game, that did not work out, I'm sure, the way they wanted to. Some late penalties, some game management problems kind of reared their ugly head, but they were able to bounce back, show response in beating Louisville at home this past week, 28 to 13. So when we look at this NC state team, I think, you know, my mind honestly goes to the offense kind of right from the jump. So Tom, uh, when you do look at that Wolfpack offense, what is it that they're able to do so well? And what are the th some of the things that are going to pose problems to Florida state's defense? Yeah, typically Aslan, it's an offense that won't bail you out. You know, one of the problems down in Miami for NC state was they were plagued by drops key drops in key situations or else they probably break the 40 point plateau but Devin Leary 21 touchdowns on the season only two interceptions he's completing passes at just under 67 percent 
This is a group that loves to run the football too. In watching them play Clemson earlier this year, if you saw after three quarters, NC State had the ball for almost 31 minutes of the game. Clemson just didn't have the ball. NC State was content to run it right at Clemson's defense over and over and over again. And that's what, when Ira was alluding to the physical test of this week, NC State will not bail you out. They will just run it at you over and over again. They're content with three and four yards at a, uh, at a clip. They can obviously go for more. Bam Knight is only a sophomore, technically speaking, but it feels like he's been there forever. Uh, Amika mezzi has been catching passes in NC State since 2017. Thayer Thomas is a really, really a uh, nice weapon over the middle, and he's also got a 70-plus yard touchdown reception this year. In fact, between uh, Amezi and Thomas, almost 80 catches between those two. The next closest receiver on the team has 23, so those are your two principal targets at receiver. And then Devin Leary, the quarterback, is, you know, he's obviously somebody who, if you look at that touchdown-interception ratio, he doesn't put the ball in danger very often. A lot of high-percentage passes outside of the numbers. They'll take their shots down the field once they've set you up, and they love to isolate linebackers in the RPO game. So, for a Florida State team that might be a little bit bumped and bruised after a matchup against Clemson, that defense has to be ready to go because NC State is physical. As Ira said, they like to fight you, and the tape shows it, and so do the numbers. North Carolina State grading out at 81 right now on offense. Florida State's defense grading out at 82. Um, Florida State's offense, meanwhile, Ira, found some identity, found some rhythm, found some tempo, found some success, obviously, with Jordan Travis over that four-week span, one of them being a bye week, but obviously they grew up against Syracuse, built on it against North Carolina State, took care of UMass. And I, I think we can, I don't know, maybe agree that they took a step laterally at best maybe against Clemson of, of their 10 final drives. None were uh, more than 30 yards, but again, a lot of that credit goes to Clemson's defense. Will Florida State's offense have similar problems uh, lining up against this North Carolina State? Defense, how do you sort of size up the, the Knowles offense with Kenny Dillingham going up against a Tony Gibson in this Wolfpack defense? Yeah, I don't think NC State's defense is, is dominant from play to play. Where they're really good, I think where they've made their bones is uh, situationally. They're great in third down defense. They're great in red zone defense. You know, you look at this last game against Louisville, Tom mentioned earlier that NC State, you know, I'm, I'm, when you look at the scoreboard, it looks like they won handily by a couple touchdowns. Louisville had over 415 yards of offense. I mean, they they ran the ball. They ran for over 200 yards. They passed for over 200 yards. But situationally, they just couldn't get it done. They they were set to settle for field goals. They went for it on fourth down and got stuffed. Uh, they would they would they would control the ball, but then they could not get it in the end zone. But that's been the story for NC State for most of the season, other than that Miami game and uh, you know maybe the Mississippi State game. Mississippi State had some success against them as well. But that's really been their MO. So I think Florida State's going to be able to move the ball against them. It's not like, you know, Clemson had five stars after five stars after five stars in that front seven. NC State doesn't have that. They've got some experienced guys. They've got some physical and tough guys, but they're not quite as dominant. So I think Florida State can move the ball. The question is, can they do anything in the red zone? And I think that's that's going to be the challenge for this team. They've actually, I think Florida State's been better at that. Um, I You know, I, as far as Florida State's offense goes, I, I don't expect it to be a big number. Uh, in this game, but I think they're going to play better than they did against Clemson. Uh, the challenge is going to be in that red zone. If Cam McDonald's not healthy, he got banged up in the last game. That lo that costs you one big red zone target. Um, and then, you know, maybe you can break some long runs that, uh, you know, go the distance so you don't have to settle for trying to punch in inside the 10 or 15-yard line. It's going to be tough sledding, though. I'm not going to tell you the Florida State's going to go out and put up 30 points against that defense. I think Miami's just about the only team that's really done it, and they did it mostly through the air. And I don't know if Florida State's going to be capable of doing it through the air. So uh, it's going to be a physical game. I think Florida State's best bet on offense is that the defense plays really well, maybe gets a turnover too, uh, which, you know, as Tom said, they're not easy to come by against NC State, but maybe at least get some good field position uh, to help out that offense because, I, you know, I do think they'll move the ball, uh, but it's going to be a tough, tough afternoon for sure. Florida State's offense right now grading out at 69, according to Pro Football Focus. North Carolina State's defense, uh, 89 on the grading scale. And North Carolina State also has Corey Durden, former Florida State uh, Seminole, on their starting front four there. Or maybe they're starting front three, right, Tom? I think they run a weird 3-3-5 three, yeah. three, stack, Tony Gibson. Yeah, uh, they do. It's a 3-3-5. It's a three, three, it creates all kinds of angles, and it could cause problems for the Florida State running game. The one thing I'd note, as you're quoting the, the PFF grades, uh, if you're an NC State fan and you're watching this program, you know that what you see at home is not what you see on the road, at least so far this season. So the big challenge for NC State is to make it translate on the road. Two of their ugly games this year at Mississippi State 
at Miami. So that will be one of the challenges for the defense and the offense to play with more consistency on the road because at home, they're really, really tough to beat. But Florida State knows that between these two teams in the last 20, 25 years. And I wanted to add one one more thing to to the offense that Tom talked about. Uh, Thayer Thomas, who he mentioned, is, is a phenomenal wide receiver, slot receiver, very dynamic, uh, very productive. He torched Florida State last year for, I think, 11 catches for 135 yards. That's going to be a key matchup to me because Kevin Knowles, who's really come on as a true freshman, is a, is a very good slot corner. And I think he's playing with a lot of confidence. This week in practice, he was dominant. Uh, he had a good game last week against Clemson. That's going to be a good matchup. They had no answers for him last year in the slot. They played him terribly. I don't think they ever understood what he was trying to do. And that was one of the things Kevin Knowles talked about when we spoke to him this week was know what the situation is, know what he's trying to accomplish on a route, and that'll help you defend against him. Florida State last year, it seemed like they they didn't know what he was trying to do, and they let him just take whatever he wanted. That's going to be a key uh, in this uh, defensive performance, I think, this, this, this time out. Well, that's a matchup. What's it going to take to win, and who's going to win the game? We'll talk about that next right here on the War Chant Report. Don't forget live happy hour over at the corner pocket at 5 p.m. with Jeff Cameron and Corey Clark, and then a pregame show at 9 a.m. with Jeff and Tom, and then the postgame show obviously goes down 10, 15 minutes after what we hope will be a victory with Gene Williams and Tom Lang. So wait, wait, just to clarify, so people can go and meet the Corey Clark in person? Is that what you're telling me? Touch him. Shake his hand. Yes, Tom's there. Tom's seen it happen, right? Do we have... I mean, how much security do we have in place? Oh, yeah, it's just me, and I'm having a beverage. You can walk right up. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our YouTube page. Forgot to shout out our guy, Michael Langston. He does his recruiting chats uh, monthly during football season right here live on YouTube. We'll probably have one this coming week as the Miami game looms and lots of visitors coming on campus. So, again, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the page. Uh, it's certainly worth your time if you're a big-time Florida State fan, which you are. They're 3-5, and five and you're still here. We appreciate you more than you could ever know. Let's get back to the game then. NC State, again, that's going to be a 4 p.m. kickoff on ACC Network. They are ranked 19th in the nation. I'll begin with you then, Ira. As we look at this game, we've heard the matchups. Tom and you yourself have laid out everything for us. What would be a key to the victory uh, for Florida State? Florida State hopes to pull off the upset. I mean, they are underdogs at home. NC State is ranked. Uh, What will be a key to victory for Florida State if they hope to pull off an upset against NC State on Saturday? You know, I really do think it's going to come down to the defensive line uh, for for the de- really the whole the whole game because I think Florida State's going to have to uh, win this game on defense. I don't think Florida State's offense is going to be able to put up a ton of points against that defense. I think the defense is going to have to step up and really make this uh, a slugfest, a low scoring game, and maybe create some opportunities for the offense. Uh, I like the way uh, Jermaine Johnson and Keir Thomas and I mean they're playing their best ball right now. Fabian Lovett, that group is playing really well. I think they came out of that game in good shape physically against Clemson, whereas I think the other side of the ball, it took took its toll. I think Florida State's defensive front is really coming into its own, and I think they want this opportunity. I think they want to take over a game. Having said that, NC State's got a salty offensive line. I think that might be how Adam Fuller or someone else described them. Uh, They're a physical bunch up front. They want to run the football. Uh, They've got physical backs. So it's going to be a great test, but I really think Florida State's defensive line, this is their chance to really step up and have a huge game. And if they do that, I think you give Florida State – it helps everybody on the defense. Obviously, it helps the secondary. It helps the linebackers. But it also helps out the offense if they can control – get NC State's offense off the field. Tom, will the defense be the key to victory? Will they carry the day, or is it something on the offensive side of the ball? Uh, I'll start with the third phase and say catch the ball in the, uh, the punt game as long as it's not inside the 10-yard line. As long as it's not inside the 10-yard line. Let's do that. Uh, I think, yeah, the defensive line's got a real chance to eat this weekend. I think Ira makes great points there, in addition to the fact that NC State lost one of its guards for the season. It's a banged-up bunt. They also lost a nose guard on the defensive line earlier this season. So NC State is dealing with some bumps and bruises at multiple positions. Uh, that's why I think Noel fans felt a little bit more bullish about FSU's chances a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the thing I'd say, too, is stick with what you do on the ground. I think it'll work better this weekend against NC State than it did Clemson, not just because Clemson's more littered with talent, but if you look at the way these games play out, a more patient running style will provide you some bigger bigger chunks 
against NC State. The quick hitters against Clemson, I thought, would be a little bit more successful. So stick to what you do. Don't do anything crazy with turnovers and make sure that you field a punt, please. Because if you do, you'll find a lot more hidden yards, I promise you. How about honorable mention, gentlemen, to maybe keeping your quarterback upright and safe, uh, that being Jordan Travis. Yep. Obviously, with the news uh, on Wednesday that Chubba Purdy has entered the transfer portal, they will be without his services, Ira. So, I mean, we've talked about it. I guess just, you know, if you want to revisit any thoughts in terms of maybe the surprise uh, at that news and what it could possibly mean to Florida State here uh, in the immediate future. Yeah, you know, it, the biggest thing is I, I really think it's just in terms of if something bad happens, uh, you know, it's just you lose a little bit of a buffer in case you have any, you know, rash of injuries going down the stretch. But I, you know, I don't think uh, unless, you know, Jordan Travis goes down and McKenzie Milton goes down, that's the only way I think you were going to see Chubba Purdy. I think McKenzie uh, was the number two quarterback, even though Chubba is the one that went in uh, in the UMass game. So uh, I don't think it's a huge impact in terms of uh, you can't win these games without him, uh, but it does it does remove your emergency buffer. If anything happens to those top two guys, now you got to go to Tate Rodemaker, who hasn't played in the game since last year, and, uh, and, and then you don't have any other scholarship quarterbacks after that. Tom, when two guys come in in the same class, that being Tate Rodemaker and Chubba Purdy, usually one of those guys ends up leaving. So I, I don't know how surprised you were, but uh, what was your reaction from Wednesday's news of Chubba's uh, transfer, and how do you think that could impact Florida State here uh, in these next four games? Yeah, I was just I was surprised because you got one month left in the season. And if you look at Jordan Travis and Mackenzie Milton's recent history, I mean, you're a couple of plays away from getting some serious time and some serious run. I, I, you know, if it, if it was in your heart, if you're Chubba Purdy, that you wanted to leave at the end of the season, you still have four really good opportunities to put serious, you know, good film out there to get you to your next landing spot. Now, maybe he's already got a place picked out. Maybe that's why you decided now was the time. I, I can only speculate on that. Uh, but for me, I think what you're looking at is potentially some serious fallout for this quarterback room for the next year, because this now opens the opportunity. I saw Michael Langston report on Wednesday that he thinks that Florida State definitely is going to dip into the transfer portal for a second quarterback this cycle. Not another high school recruit, but into the transfer portal. So if you bring in somebody established, that automatically creates friction, I would think, for Jordan Travis and the transfer in the spring. And A.J. Duffy, as long as he signs as he intends to do so, early in December, he's the next guy up after that in the long term. So I think you could be looking at the beginning of something significant before we get to next fall camp. We'll see how it all shakes out. As for the next month, though, I really, again, if you're Chubba, opportunities may have been knocking in these next few games. We'll see if uh, that was an opportunity lost and Tate Rodemaker comes in or if Jordan stays healthy and upright, as long as you said, for the rest of the season. Because if he does, obviously Jordan Travis gives the Knowles the best chance to win the next four games. I, I do, just to follow up on that, I do think that that's probably the balance that these guys have because you're, you're seeing it around the country now. Uh, another guy, the same day that, that uh, Chubba went in the portal, uh, another quarterback went in the portal. And I, uh, I think one of the guys that had been at LSU. So it's just, I think there's the balance between yeah, you might get a chance to play in that last month, or you can take this time to figure out where you're going to go so you can be at your new school by the turn of the semester. There's a lot of things that have to happen in terms of paperwork, classwork, and all that stuff to get into a new school so you can participate in spring, how important we know how important that is. So I think that's the balance as they're trying to figure out where they're going to go over that last month or so. College football, 21st century. It's fun. It's exciting times. All right, then let's turn our attention back to Saturday again, 4 p.m. kickoff on ACC Network, number 19, NC State coming to Tallahassee to take on three and five Florida State. Five wins might get you to bowl eligibility in this day and age. Uh, three definitely cinches it up. Man, this NC State game, you, you kind of need to hold serve at home. It feels like Ira to keep this thing rolling. If you do want those precious 15 more practices or 12 more practices you get when bowl prep rolls around. So Saturday, your game prediction, how do you see it rolling out with a, a score prediction for us? Yeah, this is weird, man. Usually I, I really take a very, um, you know, I, I think I take, you know, kind of a factual based approach. I don't usually go too much on uh, just emotions um, or hunches. I don't know. For some reason, I have a hunch that they're going to play well Saturday. Uh, as I said before, I think the emotions are good. I think psychologically, I think they're in a good place. Um, I do think the point Tom brought up earlier uh, about NC State, their home and road splits, they don't look like the same team. I watched that Miami game. We all watched that Miami game where they dropped all those passes. They did not look very sharp uh, in that game. Miami won that game, but it felt more like NC State lost it. Um, so I, I just maybe I, maybe that's in my mind. I think Florida State's going to somehow pull it off, I, even though I don't think they're 
uh, in the best place physically, I do think they're going to pull it off. I, I got Florida State winning this game 20 to 14. Nice. Nice. We'll take that. We'll take that. Any win is a win that we like around these parts. Tom, how about you? How do you see this one shaking out? I'd be thrilled if they hold NC State to 14 points. That, that would be a statement day for the defense to respond from the physical test uh, against Clemson, the things that we were talking about in segments one and two. I, I don't know here. You know, I, I think sometimes it's it's a cliche to say how the first quarter goes is how the game is going to go. Just look at Florida State going up to Chapel Hill, being down 10 to nothing, and then running off 35 to 7 and, and you know, running away with that game. I'm, I'm going to be watching the first quarter very, very closely to see how physically engaged the Knolls are. It's not because of a lack of will. It's just, you know, with what's gone on with the bug for this week with this team, we'll see how ready to go they are. Uh, you hear it in my voice. I think they'll rally next week for a good game against Miami, but I, I think NC State is too much. That's a bad matchup coming off of a physical uh, rivalry game last week. NC State wins the game 27-17. Tom, you know, you're, you're, you're supposed to be the lighthouse for us. Maybe you stay lit and bright and, and confident for us. And that's that's a bit altered a little bit of my my thoughts on the game. I just, you know, to Ira's point, Ira is probably usually always in the right when it comes to looking at these things the, the correct way. I, I mean, gut wise, emotional wise, I, I kind of lean towards, I guess, Tom's sort of thoughts about there was just so much, uh, you know, emotional capital spent in Clemson. I think it's really tough to get off the mat, especially against a team. They got a lot to play for. I mean, NC State can can still win the Atlantic, and then they can win this conference, and who knows what's going to happen with a playoff picture. Um, I'd say, like, I think NC State 28-27. So we'll cover. We'll we'll get back on at least covering, you know. So that's that'll hopefully, uh, you know, let us know the brighter days are ahead. And I would sacrifice – would you all agree with me here? We'll, we'll sacrifice a loss against NC State if they can beat Miami next week. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I and I and I definitely I you know all week I've been feeling that that was the better matchup, the better opportunity to get a win. I don't know what it is, man. As this week's gone on, for some reason I just feel like they might pull it out, but we'll see. And and part of it is because I don't I don't expect NC State to play their best in this game, but you know I also uh, a few weeks ago I didn't think a team Louisville I didn't think Louisville would come here and play very well, and they did. So uh, I, I've certainly been wrong before, but right now I'm, I'm going with my gut, and I think Florida State's going to pull it out. All right, there it is, folks. Uh, for Ira and Tom Amazon, thanks for watching. Again, don't forget live happy hour Friday at Corner Pocket and Grill on Appalachian Parkway with Jeff and Corey. And then we'll get you ready on Tallahassee Game Day with Jeff and Tom, 9 a.m. Saturday. You don't need to watch college games on ESPN. Watch those guys right here on War Chan TV. And then the post game show, taking your phone calls, all your social media comments with Gene Williams and Tom Lang on War Chant TV about 10, 15 minutes after the game. Uh, again, for Ira and Tom Amazon, thank you so much for watching this edition of the War Chant Report.